programmers. Today I want to show you how to go from one animation to another animation in Unity for my character. If you're not a great artist, you can download some animation. Here's a source of free graphics. It's opengameart.org and I did a search for red monsters and I found this really cool um, image of a monster. There's two images to allow you to create an idle animation and one got hit image. So go ahead and download those and create a brand new Unity project from Unity Hub. I'm going to do new project, select 2D, and then give your project a name. I'm going to do a, an abbreviation for animation. Now we have an empty scene. When you download the images from the Open Game Art, it gives you a folder you can expand, and we've got our two images for when the monster's idle and the one for when it gets hit. I'm going to rename those because when I drag them into Unity, it's going to use the name, whatever name it has and I don't want it to be frame one and two. So I'm going to call this idle one, but I'll spell it right, and then idle two. And then this one I'm going to call a hit. All right, so now we want to drag these three into the, the scene. It's going to do something special. It's going to create an animator and an animation. So I'm going to call this idle animation. And then notice that I've got four different things that were added to my assets folder. The two images, the idle one and the idle two, we can see those images there. But it also has this uh, little thing that's an idle um, animation controller and then the animation, the idle animation right there. I, I'm going to rename this controller. That should be okay. Um, so what if you want a second animation? Right now, if you hit play, it already looks pretty cool. The scene shows this little red monster and doing his little animation. What if you want him to be able to switch and transition to the other image for gut hit? So first it's bothering me that the name here is idle. So I'm gonna call this little guy red. And then with red selected, I'm gonna go up and go to window animation and then I'll pick the top one animation so I've got this little floating thing I'm gonna dock it up here and we can see that here are the images that I use there's the first image and the second image for my idle animation and it's called idle animation you can create another animation. So I'm going to say create a new clip and this animation is going to be called the uh, got hit. And I only have one image that can go with this. I need to drag it into the project. So I'll just drag it into the assets. And so since there's only one image, I'm going to use it twice. Um, and we'll change this to a smaller, oh, not a bigger number, a smaller number, and drag this in here. So if you had more than one image, you could put more than one image here. Cool, so we've got our got hit image. If we were to hit play and go over to our scene, we would see we've transitioned into this new animation, which is not so much an animation as just changing to one picture. All right, so we've got two animations. If you go to window, animation and this time instead of clicking on animation go to animator we're gonna see looks like I'm zoomed out if you don't see anything double click on your red object and you're gonna see that on entry into the scene you're gonna go to this idle animation I can zoom in a little bit there and the new animation we added got hit right now you can drag this around if you want to right now there's no way to get there so what we're gonna do is select the idle animation right click and do make transition and we're gonna make a way to the get to the got hit and if we're in got hit, if you select that, we need to make a way to go back to the idle animation. And what is the secret going to be for this? Well, over here in the parameter section, we're going to add a parameter and I'm going to make mine a bool, but you could do a float or an int or a trigger. And I'm going to call this hit. And if you click on the transition there, we can set up some 
uh, parameters about this transition, I'm going to say it doesn't have an exit time and the transition duration is going to be zero. So I'm, I just want to immediately go to the other animation and then under conditions I'm going to hit a plus sign and it knows there's only one condition that's there's only one parameter I set up and I'm going to say you're going to go from the idle to the got hit if hit is true and if I select on the other one I'm going to do those same steps but this time the condition is going to be that hit is false all right, so we've got our animation set up. Let's go back to the scene and we want to make a way to go from one animation to the other. I'm just going to use buttons, but in my real game, I have like guns that are shooting and, and the monster gets hit. But instead, I'm just going to create two buttons for now. So I'll go under UI and button text mesh pro. Um, that's the one I want. And if this is the first time you've ever used a Text Mesh Pro button and that's what you selected, you might get this little pop up about importing the Text Mesh Pro Essentials. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. It'll download everything I need there. We can move that around if we want. We can resize it. And I'm definitely going to make mine a little bit bigger and put both of my buttons at the top. So I made my button bigger if you want to make the font bigger. I always do that to make it easy to see. And instead of saying button, I'm going to change this to say um, hit. So this will be our clue to do that hit animation. And I want another button that has the same font size. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And my second button, I'm going to make this, instead of saying hit, I'm going to make it say heal. So that'll be the clue to go back to the idle animation. All right, so we've got our two buttons, but we need to hook, um, hook in the way to transition from one animation to the other. I'm gonna click on my red guy here and add a script. So I'm gonna add a component, a new script, and we're gonna call this, I'm gonna call it monster, monster controller and open this up. Most of the code that they created for us, the start and the update, we don't need for this example, but you might need for your project. So I'm gonna delete those. But I am gonna make a new function, two functions actually. A public function for what do you do when, whoa, that autocomplete was way off. What do you do when you get hit? And then I can clone this. And what do you do when you want to heal your little monster? And outside of the functions, I'm going to add a public animator. And I'll, I can just call that animator. And inside, when you're hit, you want to take the animator. And remember when we set up a bool, and the bool was called I think we called it lowercase hit, but we can double check. If you're hit, you want to set that to true, and that'll trigger that animation to happen. And if you are hitting the heal button, we're going to change that so instead of true, it's false. All right, so let me make sure to save this and go back over to my project. And now with the red selected, I want to make sure to hook up um, the action for those buttons. So I've got red selected and right now there is nothing set for the animator. Well, we can see the animators attached to this red guy. So we can just drag in red and it'll know use the animator part here. For both of the buttons, we need to set up the action. So click on one button and this is the hit button. All right, so on click, we're gonna add an on click. And on click, I'm going to drag in red in there and say we want to run from the monster control script. We want to run the hit function anytime someone hits that button. Go to my second button. We're going to add in a, a condition. When somebody clicks on that, we want to run the heal. Okay, so we'll go ahead and run this and fingers crossed. 
Hopefully I didn't miss anything. We see our little monster. I'd like to maybe move him down, but if I hit, ooh, he, he changes and I heal, he changes. So it's bothering me that he's quite so big. So let me go to red. I'm gonna hit F to zoom in there and we can make him a little smaller. We can also move him down a little bit and hit run. and hit and heal. And I'm gonna go over and look at this. Um, we've got our animator tab. Let me drag it down so we can see it at the same time. Notice that we're in our idle animation and when we hit heal, we should transition down into the, oh, sorry, when we hit hit, we should transition down into the got hit animation. We hit heal, we go back to the idle animation. All right, pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed this. Happy programming.